Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay. I am a romance writer, lover and general enthusiast. On the channel we're taking a deep dive into all things romantic comedies and today I am going to be watching and reacting to the movie on Netflix which is Set It Up. This is not the first time I've watched this movie. I've seen this movie quite a few times. It's definitely one of my favorites. And no one else seems to talk about this movie. It just doesn't get the praise it deserves. It's definitely a slept on movie. And so I wanna change that by talking about it today. I'm sure I'll have a lot to say on this movie, but let's talk about it while we're watching it at the end. But for now, it's a Friday night. I'm single, I'm dateless. I have no social plans. I'm alone in my sweats with a glass of wine and I'm gonna watch Set It Up. I love this movie. So this is the only thing I've ever seen Glenn Powell in. Zoe Deutsch have seen in quite a few things. I love them together in this movie. I think they're such a good romantic lead together. I think they're going to be in something else new again together, but I'm not sure if it's going to be a romantic comedy and they're going to be romantic leads together, so. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. He's coming. The way Hollywood portrays like an office environment makes me laugh because it actually is like this quite a lot in real life, sadly. Get this to my doctor. Better still be warm when it gets there. I would hate to be a personal assistant though. I have a really good friend and she was a personal assistant and her life was literally like this movie. It was a living hell. She'd be away for the weekend and he'd ring her from a different city asking her to book him a taxi. Book your own taxi, lazy. Tired and overworked because her hair isn't done and she's got one half of her collar tucked in. Are you trying to starve me? No. <laughs> My bones are eating themselves to stay alive. Order me that thing that I like from that place with the gay waiter, the closeted one. So we are doing a second <laughs> dinner. To make sure that this is at 10,000 steps before you booze gets here tomorrow. Lucy Liu is an icon. 45 minutes. She doesn't need to run around. She just needs to sit there and shake it. She's gonna call my girlfriend. You would waste my time. <laughs> Phone on the floor, that's not gonna be useful. Sometimes you end up wanting dinner. Shut my damn door. It's good for the narrative, but imagine actually working for someone who is that much of a knobhead. Did you return my blue jacket? Yes, I want it back. Absolutely. <laughs> what else? The writing in this movie, I think, is on point. The one line is a good. Well, I might have a story idea. Actually, it's not fleshed out or anything, I haven't cracked it, so. Oh, good, so you're telling me it's bad before I've even heard it. To live their dreams. She's me. I cry at just everything. <laughs> and then call my lawyer and tell him to counter serve her for serving me. Okay, I'm the hood. Where's my dinner? Oh man. It's cash only. What if I told you I could pay you triple? Cash only. Who carries cash anymore? Do any of you guys carry cash? I wouldn't know what to do if I had cash. Cash the way only two options are for you to Here we go, here's our meat cute. And it's a great one. I have cash. I have so much cash. Can I borrow some money? <laughs> no, because now this is my boss's dinner. Do I look like somebody who can afford interest? I steal my toilet paper from the office bathroom. <laughs> I've done that before. That was for me. <laughs> You're a monster. I just love them together. I just think they bounce off each other so well. I can wake you up with my penis. <laughs> and if I don't get eight hours, my face could be puffy. So this movie definitely falls into the classic cliche of the existing love interest is just a bad person. It's a real easy cop out, but I think in this instant it works pretty well. I said no. I... <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I said yes! Ah! We're not old enough to get married. <laughs> I've definitely felt like that. I still feel like that, and most people I know are engaged or getting married, so. I think the best friend in this movie is done really well as well. She's a really likable best friend. Her storyline, I think, adds a lot of humor. As does his best friend. It's Pete Davidson, isn't it? Hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Doesn't it still just kind of blow your mind when you look at Pete Davidson there and you just think Ariana Grande and Kim Kardashian? Where's my lunch? I'm gonna go get it right now. <laughs> Call me something. Lucy Liu is just such an icon. Where's the pencil dick? 
Uh, Pencils can be all lengths and girths, so the joke's on him. <laughs> can they? Who's ever known a girthy pencil? Hello? Holy shit! <laughs> Are you like a janitor or something? Do I look like a janitor? No. <laughs> Miss Piggy and Voldemort had a baby, and that baby had low blood sugar and hadn't had sex in a year. Don't talk about babies having sex. What's wrong <laughs> with you? Do you want some? In American movies, they always just drink straight scotch and straight whiskey. Is that just in the movies? Please tell me people don't do that, unless you're like a middle-aged man who's drinking straight whiskey. I've never even had a boyfriend. Here. But you're like a grown-up. Take that back. <laughs> Let's just lock him in a room together so they can have sex with each other. <laughs> All I care about is that I'm not still an assistant when I'm 28 years old. I'm 28. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> For you. That's very sad for you. I just love them together so much. I love it. I love it! Why are you so quiet? You move like a Prius. <laughs> what is that? Charlie, this could save us. Sorry, I gotta take my girlfriend to lunch. Yeah, so they make her just like a bitch who clearly doesn't really like him. And it's an easy plot device because then you don't feel bad when he leaves her. But I don't mind it in this storyline because I think it adds so much comedic value. You got any seats? Yeah. Now you're gonna have to get me a masseuse. Three centimeters from the stage. Human. We need a meet cute. Like, every great romance has a meet cute. Super meta. Like getting stuck in an elevator or something. A succulent. Can you grow plants down here? Oh, no. They just slowly die. <laughs> Why is he smelling it? Succulents don't smell. <laughs> Pay attention to Lucy Lucy. Whoa, 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 who's this guy? Okay, you need to go, sir. <laughs> Make your way out of there. Yep, this is how it always starts in my nightmare. I've been stuck in an elevator before. Literally, it was like 30 seconds and then it started up again. But it actually wasn't that terrifying. <sighs> Okay, the pants are off. I'm calling the firefighters. Maybe we can make a rope. <laughs> You're not gonna get any surface. Don't, Don't pee. 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 <laughs> 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 Why? In what world <laughs> would that be your response? Let me piss in these cups that I might have to spend an infinite amount of time with. Hello. <laughs> hate we can work with. Hate is not the opposite of love. Do you know what the opposite of love is? Indifference. Ice. Indifference. Hi, I'm so sorry. So, 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 so sorry. I got here so early that I thought I had time to dig around, so I went to that gift shop, then I lost track of time, and suddenly I was late. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That is not a real thing. That definitely is a real thing. I've done that on multiple occasions. One is a stunningly beautiful woman with dark hair and a fierceness that's both scary and inspiring. The other is a guy. <laughs> of all the mainstream sports in America, baseball has to be the most boring. Like, in America, do you have a sport called rounders? So in England, we have rounders, which is literally just baseball, but it's like a kid's game that you play at picnics. Is that your boyfriend? Absolutely not, Dennis. I hope you took the stairs. How else would I get here? Ugh, no humor. Red flag. It's the best seat in the stadium. Oh, he likes the front row now. I thought we gave him a bad neck. From where I'm sitting, you can hear both coaches better. They're literally the same seat. Yeah. All right. Have a look, it's Pearson and Rick. I do always think in this scene though, is there not a huge risk that those two would get put in the kiss cam? And then the bosses would just know that they were there together? I mean, it doesn't happen, but could it? Spend the night with a man. Oh, is that something you would tell your assistant? You need to get it, girl. <laughs> get it, girl. Sleep. And you sneeze. Oh, it went away. That's disappointing. Go, have fun. Let him win a few holes. Excuse me, I only have one hole. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, if I see any hair on a woman, I'm out. God, he's such a dick. <laughs> Kirsten needs to get a bikini wax. He's not educated on what bikini wax is then because he said any hair and bikini is just the edges. She needs to get like a Hollywood. You do know what Cyrano means, right? Yeah, I'm not an idiot. So what is it? We're full on parent trapping. Got the one. Is that up? 
What? Can you just? You should probably just be a little easier <laughs> on the ha ha ha's. I love that they actually are spending time together as well because they actually don't need to be out to dinner right now. They could just be texting or talking on the phone. They clearly want to hang out with each other. <laughs> A lot of men proposed to me in my 20s. I could be thrice divorced by now. No one has proposed to me in my 20s. If I pay you to make my life easier, but instead you make it harder, you're useless to me. Lucy Liu just is suddenly really unlikable. Get out of here. Save yourself. We need a whole new project. Oh, I see his face there. He was so moved that she stayed with him. You can tell that was like a shift in him because he was just so happy that she, the fact that she stayed with him. Nobody likes the actual work. That's the point of a job. You do the best one where you make the most money. Hmm. That is just the worst advice imaginable. When I came out of school and I was 18, people would ask me, oh, what do you want to do for a living? That was my answer, I used to say make a lot of money and people would laugh and I'd be like, I'm not joking. And while that's a good thing and I still do want to make a lot of money, happiness and enjoying and loving what you do is so much more important than making a lot of money. Obviously you need a lot of money, especially in this economy to live, but if it costs you your mental health, it's too expensive. I haven't actually written anything or finished writing anything. Oh, a personal attack. You're a terrible assistant. <laughs> I love them. They're so cute. Oh. What? Yeah. I have no idea. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't as good as the lemons. I think Rick's drunk. Give me a while, I can get drunk too. Girl, hide. I want rose petals everywhere. I need it to look like a massacre of flowers. Oh, this is the best part of the movie. Someone say Boner City? <laughs> Freaking love that place. And where are the rest of your shorts? <laughs> your shorts suck. You know what? You guys stop it. All right? You're not friends. I kind of feel like we're becoming friends. Duncan? You didn't know Seuss. Yeah, I heard you were coming and I still showed up. <laughs> That's the thing as well, isn't it? Because if you're going to be with someone, you want them to be friends with your friends. So the really subtle subplot of Pete Davidson's character hating his current girlfriend but absolutely adoring Zoe Deutsch is just easy to overlook, but it'll get in there subconsciously. <laughs> Like I say, they really, really nail the making his existing girlfriend an absolute bitch. They have really, really leaned into that, this movie. I usually hate it when they make the existing love interest just a villain because it's just such a cop-out. It's just a way to make it easy for the main character to not be a dick themselves when it comes to leaving the, that person and getting with the actual love interest of the movie. But I don't know, for me it really works in this movie, making her horrible, just adds comedy, makes it funny, and it doesn't take away from the existing relationship because it's more to do with his self-development of understanding that what he wants in a girlfriend is not just someone who's really sexy and pretty and a model, it's someone who he really connects with, who is gonna be Harper. <laughs> First guy I ever slept with came out while he was inside of me. <laughs> Can you imagine? Doesn't even wait until he's pulled out. I will be your other salamander. Oh, I thought that's so pretty when it gets dark with all those lights. Hey, Hi, Charlie Deadwork. Nice to meet you. On a western bay and it serves a hundred ships a day. He um, dresses like a stepdad, as you can see. <laughs> I am completely and totally in love with him. You like because and you love despite. That felt real. That felt like a real speech you would hear. That's my right. <laughs> he does do it every time. <laughs> and not only does she get along with his friends, he gets along with hers. This is like Bruce Lee. <laughs> well, now you're just like one of those blow bear men outside a car dealership. Oh, slow song. Like Romeo and Juliet. Our families are mortal enemies, and yet... Romeo and Juliet. Everyone always goes on about Romeo and Juliet as if it's this great, amazing love story and it's the best love story of all time. It's about two 13-year-olds who haven't even probably hit puberty yet, who get obsessed with each other and then end up killing themselves. How is that the best love story ever told? Someone tell me. 
you like expensive stuff and faces are so near. Yet you're tolerable. I do not let her walk all over me. I'm sorry, where are your sunglasses? I know where we used to be. You talk way too fast. And you are way too nice to everyone. And yet <laughs> you are a terrible dancer. That's not how it works. I need pizza. There's no pizza on this roof, and so I have to go. All the friendships in this movie are so good. I love all the supporting friends in this movie. Where do you want these? Oh, you can just put them on the table. She gets the friend bought pizza, and she didn't stop her leaving to go get pizza because she wanted her to leave with him. I wanna fuck this pizza. <laughs> I get it. I'm kind of in love with him as well. Give me the pizza. No, 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 I'm, I, I don't, I'm gonna take it up to the top. Absolutely not. Your hands are too small. Stop. What? Stop. Keep the top up, otherwise the cheese will slide off. <laughs> Please don't drop my pizza. What? Just stop making me laugh. <laughs> I'm serious. Stop making me laugh. I'm trying stop. to. I'm just, I mean it. Okay. That's so good because it's just so genuine. There's, I feel like there's so many romance movies out there where all of the build up to the romance is just super serious and they're just really super intense moments like this. And that's not what falling in love is. Falling in love is having nights like this where you just can't stop laughing and you wanna share pizza and you go on an adventure to get up some fire escape. Like <laughs> that's so genuine and that's what falling in love is. And that's why I love this movie so much. It just feels so real, so genuine. I just love it so much. That pizza looks fucking terrible. Thank God. That looks so good. It doesn't. Just <laughs> It looks awful. Where's the cheese? She was on about the cheese sliding off. There's no cheese on it. It's too dry. You can wow. tell from the bend. <laughs> this is the best meal I've ever had in my entire life. He's giving her lovey eyes. I should probably go home. This is where you're supposed to tell her not to go home. Slice for the road? Two, please. Oh. Hang up. Hang up. Yes, King! Oh, that whole however many minutes of them hanging out, not at work, is just perfection. Kirsten's assistant, Helga. Harper. <laughs> you two should get to know each other because Kirsten and I are, well, we're getting married. I feel like it's for the plot of this movie and them getting married leads to the sort of climax of this movie, but it does feel premature even for these characters. Would these characters be the type of people who would shotgun get married? And I know it's to come that we find out why he's kind of shotgun getting married and is to piss off his ex-wife and get married before she gets remarried. But on like Lucy Liu's character's side, would she impulsively get married? And if she did impulsively get married, again, I don't think it's anything to do with him. I think it's probably because we've had context into everyone she's friends with has like toddlers and is clear clearly married and starting families. We want you two to set it up. Set it up. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, that was such a nice hug too. I'm gonna give you some advice. I know that I've been cunty to you. Um, you haven't. I know I've been cunty to you. It's partly <laughs> because you're young. It's because I want you to succeed. Lucy Lou redeeming herself here. I'm gonna beat you to the altar, but tonight we're gonna knock boots like we did on that Swiss gondola. I think we did something really good. Me too. You are beautiful, you are charming, you are witty, you are clever. Okay, fine. <laughs> Tonight, you need to wear that red dress. Men are trash. We're not married anymore, so you can't tell me what to wear. Why are they divorced if they still want to be with each other? Hi. Oh. Oh, is this a lucky lady? What do you think that was? I don't know. I, you know, I, well, I think it probably was. I just leave like super sexy little voicemail for her to listen to. Do you think Kiki likes Topaz? She didn't mention it when she and Rick were having phone sex. You tricked me, that was entrapment. You just admitted it. The wedding, we can't still get married, Charlie. 
Oh, this is for a wedding. I actually have a great selection. If I could just show you. I think I we're just going to need one minute. Thank yes, you very much. Yes, yeah. can't. Harper, we can keep this from her. <laughs> we control her phone. She's great, that woman. You want to help Rick cheat on Kirsten? We have faked their entire relationship. Just so you can keep dating some boring girl and work longer hours at a job that does not matter. She ain't wrong. You're worse than Rick. No, he's not. You are afraid not to be an assistant anymore. That's ridiculous. Have you actually written anything with all this free time we have? I really love this third act climax here because it doesn't feel forced and it doesn't feel like it's there just to be a plot device of third act climax. It feels genuine. It feels like that's a genuine argument that people would have. The acting is so good, the writing. I think the script is so good in this movie because everything that I just witnessed there felt so real, felt so believable. And you can kind of understand both sides of the argument. It just works really well. I think a lot of movies, when you get to this climax, Max of they're gonna fall out and come apart before they can come together. Falling apart sometimes does feel a bit forced or it just feels too petty. Quite a lot of time the fight and fallout is over just something that's so pathetic or it's over something like miscommunication that in real life probably wouldn't happen. But in this it feels so genuine. You can completely understand why both people feel the way they feel and you can completely understand why they wouldn't want to talk to each other after it and it's just... Oh, no, no, sorry. <laughs> you're, you're not under arrest, you can put your hands down. We just, we just need to get the ring off. You two collaborate to like trick your bosses into dating each other and then it blows up. I wasn't listening. <laughs> That woman is the best part of this movie. She's so well casted. I love her. I don't think that you should marry Rick because you don't actually like him. I wouldn't have the balls t to be this honest, though. <laughs> we shut down the elevator so you'd meet. The Yankees game, I got you on the kiss cam. You have no idea what is real. You think you understand the intimacy of a relationship? You're 25. You're fired. I mean, yeah, inevitably. She's like, what? As if she's shocked. As if she wasn't gonna tell her all that and she wasn't gonna get fired. What did you think was gonna happen? I know you don't want to talk to me right now, but just Louis hear me out. Harper? I'm covering Kirsten's desk. Can I help you with something? Go fix it and go get your girl. Oh my God. Why are you not at work? Because I got fired. That's amazing. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and it's so bad I can't finish it. God, don't throw your MacBook on the floor. Girl, they're expensive. But you can't make it better until you actually do it. Oh my God, a personal attack. You're not a bad writer. You write something bad. Okay, I will. We all need a friend like that. Okay, it's gonna suck ass. I can't wait to read it. Okay. I am not leaving this chair until I write an entire article. Okay, you could have put an actual jacket on though. This is where came through Kanye's half birthday party. <laughs> Half birthday party. This is the best meal I've ever had. You literally have taken one tiny bite. The best meal I ever had was a $5 pizza throwing up a fire escape. I don't want to do this anymore, Suze. But you're my backup. <laughs> the shade. Harper, you were right. Well, I got like four hours. Should we go to the mat? I don't know. I mean, do you like stunningly beautiful art that makes you re-examine what it means to be human? Yeah. And yeah, the Met's worth it. When I was in New York, I didn't go to the Met because we just didn't have time. I need to go back just because I really want to go to the Met. I also just really wanted to sit on the stairs and pretend I was in Gossip Girl. XOXO. Oh my God. I did the over dick around. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love how they brought that back. The payoff of the earlier joke. Perfection. I quit. Okay. <laughs> Kirsten, don't marry him. Go with the young guy. Not what's going on here. Charlie. You're fired as fuck. I literally just quit. And even when she's complaining about you, she's really complimenting you. I gave myself goosebumps. <laughs> He's crazy. You realize that, right? What's my favorite food? Steak tartare. No one's favorite food is steak tartare. It's green curry, you douche tart. What's my favorite place? What's mine? My favorite food is pasta. My favorite place, probably Paris. Okay, technically I don't have my wallet on me, but tomorrow... Leave this place and never return. <laughs> The supporting cast in this movie is just great. Hey, you live here? It's disgusting. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hey, you still work for this guy? Nope. Look at all these idle monitors for a waste of electricity. Also, come back to work. Come back and do it with me. If I want to actually be a writer, I have to stop making excuses not to write. 
Have you written anything? Right here. Convenient that she had it printed out in her bag. What are you doing here? Oh, Kirsten told me to meet her. <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, She's hearing on us. Yes, she. I googled it, so I, I know what it means now. It's a new Cyrano with Peter Dinklage from Game of Thrones, which I've been really wanting to watch. I missed it at the cinema, though. I like you. So, so much. You're not hard to get at all. You're hard to earn. We're suits to sports games. What? You're a know-it-all. You are unbelievably bad at beer pong. You're a sore winner. And you use too many exclamation points. And yet? <laughs> and yet? Satisfying payoff as well. Perfection. My cheeks hurt from smiling so much. <laughs> okay, set it up. Let's talk about it. Oh, so yeah. I'm sure you can tell from my reaction. I just smiled <laughs> the entire time. I absolutely love that movie. I love everything about it. To me, it just is so genuine. And I just feel like it's really like watching people actually fall in love. And it feels like the type of situation that could happen in real life. The actors, Zoe Deutsch and Glenn Powell, are so good together. They just bounced off each other really well. The script writing really, really lends a hand to them as well because the wit and the banter just makes me so happy. That's something that I, and I guess everyone, is looking for in a partner, isn't it? Just being able to bounce off each other and just have a laugh together, be able to give it to each other and just have banter and a funny conversation. And that's just portrayed so beautifully in this film. Another thing that I find really interesting about this movie is I can't pin it down to one specific trope. I think a lot of films and books come into very specific tropes straight off the bat and this doesn't do this for me i actually don't know what trope genre i would put this under i mean you could say like co-workers to lovers but even that i just feel like is not right yeah i just don't know how to categorize this it's unlike any other plot i mean other than the parent trap or Cyrano, which they mention a lot, but it's not that plot. It's its own thing and I love that about it. I also don't find this movie super cliched. I mean, any romance movie is gonna have a lot of cliches in it. And by the way, when I say cliche, I don't mean it in a derogatory term. A lot of people say like, oh, it's so cliched in a bad way. No, cliches are cliches for a reason. And the reason that cliches exist is because they're tried and tested and we know that they work well and that they always deliver. So when I say cliche, I'm not meaning it in any form of bad way, but I think it's a positive in this way because it just shows how unique the film is. I mean, I really, what, what cliches did we have in this movie? We obviously had the really bitchy girlfriend. I talked about that in the movie enough. I don't need to repeat myself there. What else did we have? When they were dancing, we had the accidental slow dance scene. That was pretty cliched, but it's one of my favorite cliches that I just love it <laughs> so much. And it didn't feel cliched when I was watching it. It felt very natural. The conversation they were having and the funny dancing they were doing before it, it all sank into each other so beautifully. Another cliche I guess you could say is that they both had mean bosses, horrible bosses. That's pretty standard. I don't even know if that's a cliche. I feel like it's quite common in real life <laughs> that you usually have a mean boss at least a bit. I'm sure other cliches will pop into my head when I'm editing this, but as of right now, I can't really think of any other huge cliches that we had. Please guys, let me know what you think of the movie. What are your favorite bits? Why do you think it works so much? I mean, I don't see how anyone could dislike this movie. To me, it is just perfection. And although it is quite a new movie, it only came out in the last few years, it feels like a classic. When I watch this movie, it reminds me of like classic rom-coms from when I grew up from the 90s and the noughties. And that's what it, that's the kind of nostalgia it gives me, even though it's not a nostalgic movie for me, it, watching it makes me feel nostalgic 
nostalgic for that type of feel-good rom-com that I grew up with. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video with me. I clearly really enjoyed myself. <laughs> If you guys are lovers of rom-coms and you want to follow me along on my deep dive journey then please 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 do subscribe to the channel, leave a like and a comment down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>